Hey, Prime members, you can listen to Watch What Crappens ad-free on Amazon Music. Download the app today. Hey, I want to talk to you about Audible. Audible lets you enjoy all your audio entertainment in one app. You'll always find the best of what you love or something new to discover. Audible offers incredible selection of audiobooks across every genre, from bestsellers and new releases to celebrity memoirs, mysteries and thrillers, motivation, wellness, business. Look, my personal favorite is motivation, you know? So I've always got my Audible app fired up. Right now, I'm reading The Plot. Although, by this reading, I should say I'm listening to it on Audible. The Audible app makes it easy to listen anytime, anywhere, while traveling, working out, walking, doing chores. You decide. Try Audible free for 30 days. Visit audible.com slash crappens or text crappens to 500-500. That's audible.com slash crappens or text crappens to 500-500. Even the Rich is a podcast from Wondery that tells the jaw-dropping stories about the tumultuous lives of the world's elite. From the greatest family dynasties to pop culture superstars. Listen to Even the Rich on Amazon Music or wherever you get your podcasts. Hi, San Francisco. Hello. Who the fuck let us in here? Oh, my God. This is a classy joint. This is so classy. This is a long walk across the stage. I got my steps in. (laughs) My watch just beeped like, congratulations, bitch. You finally did something today. We got we showed up here for uh, for like the sound check and there were people getting married outside there. And I was like, I'm sorry, we've we've ruined your wedding. <laughs> your marriage, perhaps. It's wild. Just get wow. my butt crack fit away there to start it off right. Wow. Oh, I'm like at the kids' table today. It's a short chair. Yeah. I love it here. I can't believe I'm back in a real theater. Yeah. This is our this is the this is the biggest San Francisco show we've ever done. This is amazing here. It's absolutely beautiful. Everyone, you know, speaks in theater language, which I like. Yeah. Well, I came in and I said, seriously though, who who the fuck let us in here? Like we don't belong here. And she said, Oh, we're we're used to it. Sonia Morgan was here last week. Yeah. It's like, wow, way to break a seal. Thanks. You just took my you just took me from here to here. Okay. Who was at the Sonia Morgan show? Okay. Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed, you lying assholes. I know you all were here. How many of you were also her intern? Okay. <laughs> uh, I saw clips of the Sonia Morgan thing uh, because actually a, a few of our friends are here today. So hi, friends, we love you. Hi, uh, Mary from Two Judgy Girls is here. Hey, Mary. Ceci uh, from uh, the Bravo Docket. You know, I love I love some Bravo Docket. Ceci's working overtime these days. So Mary sent Mary actually was texting me during the show and she's like, "Oh hey, I'm at Sonia Morgan's show. It's so good, Ronnie. I'm not even lying to you. It is amazing." I was like, "Bullshit, it is." <laughs> so she sent me clips. I died. Let me just do one for you. This is this is how Sonia. I don't even know if this was the beginning, the middle, the end. I don't know, but here's what she did. For those at home. A beautiful Sonia Morgan prance. Foot up on the table, vagina airing out. And now humping a chair and fishing a Blackberry out of a toilet. What was that? It was that for an hour. God bless that woman. God bless America. You know what? When you find your lane, you find your lane. I am very proud of our sweet Ronnie here because today on the airplane, we were deboarding and Ronnie stood up in the aisle because it was like, you know, the the row right in front of us was like starting to take their stuff down and Ronnie stood up because he was in the aisle seat and someone tried to go around him and sneak on out and Ronnie turned and said, dude, 
That's not how lines work. I almost shed a tear. I fucking had it. I went like this with my arm. That's not how planes work, sir. Yeah. And he went, he oh, literally okay. did that. And he backed it. I feel like every time on a plane, there's some asshole, aggressive man. It's always a man. Okay? It's always a man. It's always a man. Who just walks up ahead. I'm like, no, sir. And so now I started the arm. Yeah. I don't care anymore, okay? And I felt so good, especially because I had an audience. Ben was like, that was amazing. I was like, do it. Do it. But Ben gave me this advice a few weeks ago because, I don't know, I was in like a weird space like I always am. Like, that's nothing new, right? But I was like upset over something. And he's like, Ronnie, you need to just start acting like a straight white male. Yep. Guys, I know that sounds terrible. Like, we hate them. Can I tell you I get everything I want now? It's yeah. amazing. <laughs> but when it's I can't true. do that, I just act like a five-year-old, and I'm getting my way. A couple of weeks ago, we went to this hotel, and I got there a little early before check-in, and she went, sir, I'm sorry, but check-in's not till four. And I was like, okay. And she said, well, we could do early check-in for $150. I swear to you, I did this. <laughs> <laughs> threw himself onto the counter. I was like, please. <laughs> and she went, why are you crying? I just said I would waive the fee. And I was like, I was so mortified. I was so embarrassed. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's been an adventure. I Either mean, way, I'm winning. Yeah. That's the point. <laughs> Actually, I think we are all winning because we are gathered here tonight during peak scan of all times. <laughs> Yes. A scandal so big that non Bravo watchers know about it. My dad, my dad emailed me and he's No, this is Your because dad. you know the New York Times wrote about it. The New York Times wrote about it two weeks ago, like for those people who don't know, there's a show on Bravo called Vanderpump Rules. Who are all these people? Do you details to follow? So my dad sent me that. So that's how you know this is really just like permeating pop culture. But can I say, New York Times, get off our dick. How about that? Stay in your fucking lane, okay? This isn't for you. This isn't for your fucking audience. Get the hell out of my backyard. I don't like it. All these new fans, like, oh my God, I'm on season one of Vanderpump Rules. Stassi's such a bitch. I'm like, get out of here. No one invited you here. Well, it feels like every day there's, like, new breaking news. And so uh, the, the breaking news as of four hours ago. Yeah, guys, this is a big bombshell. The headline, Sheena Shea found disgusting photo of Tom Sandoval and Raquel Levis at her wedding. Yeah. What is it, though? What's a photo? Does it say what, what happened in the photo? Well, I'm just going to give a quote, and I think it sums up the whole story. One of my girlfriends was like, so I was at the pool the morning of your wedding, and I was just, like, looking back at some of my photos, and there's, like, literally one of Tom and Raquel in the background in a cabana just hanging out at the pool together. Disgusting, Sheena. <laughs> how, do you, how do you make it through the fucking day? We were backstage right now watching an interview of Sheena. And, of course, it's Sheena in a shirt that says, It really is all happening. <laughs> and I think she's with Lala. It's probably her own shenanigans or Sheena Anagains or whatever the <laughs> fuck that thing is called. And, uh, you know, I, I was stuck up for Raquel. I was there for Raquel. And I told her I'll be there for you after this season because Lala and Katie are not going to let this go. And I am there for you, girl. And what do I get in return? What? I'm a team player. I got a TRO. Is that what it was? TRO. Yeah, we thought she said TRL, which is hilarious. Why? To think of Sheena's video ever being on TRL. I know. Sheena went viral 20 years ago today. <laughs> TRO, which stands for Temporary Restraining Order. But she That's and Gwyneth were exonerated. I don't know gave Raquel that idea, but I love that. I'm going to get that against people I don't like, too. I'm sorry, you can't be at dinner at the same place I am. You pushed me that time. I fucked your boyfriend. Well, you better be careful you don't run into Larsa Pippen because she may be a character witness for you. She needs to go to those restaurants. Like, we couldn't even go into restaurants that Lenny was in. Like, 
so like hard like I wasn't gonna like do anything but like for real to be honest about it like it was messing with appetizers so I testified um okay welcome to watch what crappens a podcast about all that crap on Bravo that we just love to talk about Thank you so much for being here, and thank you so much for being willing to stay for 19 hours, because this is Vanderpump Rules Night. I Get get cozy, put on your Nono's pajamas. I'm still not recovered from that. All right, everybody, previously on Vanderpump Rules. Welcome. I'm an oracle card reader. I'm going to connect your higher self. Card, 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 card. Eight of Pentacles. It's like a twin flame union. Alfred E. Newman, emotionally abusive, being used to getting on a television show. Nong, nong, nong. I still haven't heard about the party. Well, you're invited, and I know, because Sandoval told me. Uh, uh, uh. So they think that they just can kick me out and then bring Raquel in. It's bullshit. It's bullshit. Disengage, bitch. You better disengage right now, bitch. You give off Mistress Bimbo vibes, and I cannot stand it. Brock and I are throwing an epic wedding in Mexico. I'm not going to your wedding and yeah, you can't have my room back that's negative energy I do not need in my life on my very special day in my life I'm entitled to go the state of different resort Bob, Baba Baba, what's going on no, Baba. Baba, don't leave. Baba, Baba why no. are you leaving the party, Baba? Baba? I didn't mean to not stand up for you. You should come back uh, in the party. Nobody stop, likes Tom. you. Stop. Stop, Tom. You, you don't have stop. to feel bad about it. Stop pouring tequila on my head, Tom. You don't stop. need everybody to like you. I know, so you're what? making it so much worse right now. A lot of people don't like sardines, but they're still important for Caesar dressing. <laughs> don't worry about Tom, it, Tom, no, that's anchovies. Can't you get anything right? Oh. And scene. Scene. I actually did accidentally buy uh, sardines for Caesar salad dressing. It does make a difference. It was nasty. That shit was nasty. It's a a little different. It's a little different. I'm still traumatized by it, apparently. I'm bringing it into Vanderpump Rules recaps. Well, it's like that season when they brought in the new people like two years ago on, on Vanderpump Rules. That was like their sardine season. <laughs> it was like, ah, uh, it feels like it should be right, but this is not right. So anyway. Uh, oh, Dana. Wherefore art thou, Dana? Dana, oh, Dana. She's doing stand-up. So um, James, we're starting at James' apartment, and he's just in the corner in like a little like closet with his little Casio keyboard and garage band on his iPhone on a stand being like, wiggy, wiggy. (laughs) He's not even doing the wiggy, wiggy. He's literally, he just presses play and then he's like. (laughs) One, two, one, two, three, motherfucker. He's got those little triangles that you can buy from the marshals, like in the checkout line. They're like, oh, that's a light up triangle. And you like put them like in shapes on your wall and then it plays to the beat of the music. He's like, mm, 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 mm. yeah, I'm going to be playing Crocella. That's, that's the biggest musical festival for crows. Yeah. I'm in, darling. <laughs> so um, his dad is there, Andros, who Andros. I did not recognize because he has teeth now, first of all. Yeah. I think that if you can fuck somebody on these shows and then buy them teeth, you should be able to buy your own dad teeth, too. No shame. You buy your dad some teeth. I thought that was very nice. Yeah. So Andros is sort of like the, like the, what do you, what's that? The, the alcoholic. Big, alcoholic. Fucking per- 
reason that? that social services was invented? He's like, he's like Cockney Ken, because you don't, you only hear a few words. It's like, uh, uh, not a banger. The bang of James. Oh, you go, oh, you go oh, mad, James. Oh, 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 another banger. Another banger. Another banger. I was like, what Guy Ritchie movie did he fall out of? So then we go to Shannon Brock and Marina Del Rey. Ha! Shannon's like, I'm going to be on the couch. It's like, okay, Shannon, just sit on the couch. Like, you don't, you don't have to narrate everything you do, right? They so, rehearsed that for three hours, by the way, Ron. You know, tomorrow when the cameras come, I'm going to be on the couch. All right, oh, you'll be in the chair. The couch! <laughs> I'll be on the couch! And then Brock comes by with their little baby, who's so cute. And Sheena's like, Mama's doing a seating chart! Uh, oh my God, it's so fun because more people are coming, so now I have to reconfigure everything, so I have Joey li- right behind Raquel. It's crazy! Why aren't you vlogging this, Brock? It's like, oh, okay, so you got Joey. All right, so Peter's sitting next to James, and Raquel's got a little roster stacking up, don't you say? I'm like, if you only knew about the roster. <laughs> this, is like, this is like looking at like a baseball almanac from three years ago. We see the seating chart, but what we don't see is Raquel under all the tables. Ooh, sassy. Sassy. Listen, I'm sorry. I'm trying to be in the middle on this one, okay? Like, I get Raquel's like a young girl of 27. (laughs) Remember when we thought that was old? I was like, I can literally die when I'm 30. Like, (laughs) um, she's like a young girl of 27. Tom's a disgusting porn stashed fuck face, so you know? Yeah. Like, this is one. This is one area I wouldn't mind just blaming him for everything. You know, being like, Tom made her do it. Poor Raquel doesn't even know how to boogie board on a stage, you know? <laughs> but new news keeps coming out that's just not sitting well. Like, Ariana goes off to support her children. Okay, well, she doesn't have children yet, but it just makes the story sound better. Yeah. But she left home to go film her Lifetime movie. A Lifetime movie. To feed her children, her future children, who are still currently in a freezer. And who's over at Raquel's house unpacking stuff in front of the TMZ? Raquel, okay? Stay in your own damn house, and I'll leave you alone. I won't. I won't, though. That's an empty promise. (laughs) God, I love this life. It's look, Raquel's going through a hard time. She's aged out of the Little Miss Fresno contest. Ben, Ben, right now... We went to dinner with Ben's friends who are all so lovely, you know, and they're way too smart for this shit. And so they were like, we all have those friends, right, who are asking us about Sandoval. So he's explaining it to them, and he goes, okay, and Raquel is this girl. She just aged out of beauty pageants. (laughs) (laughs) Says it all, does it not? She's like releasing doves in her living room trying to find a talent. I died. So, (laughs) (laughs) magic! Oh, so, God. anyway, Scandaval's right outside <laughs> of me. I didn't even know we were there, I have to say. So now we go over to Sir for a really important scene. It's just Charlie standing, and a door opens, just like thwacks her. And that's all for Charlie for the episode. <laughs> Poor Charlie is really trying to make it happen this season, and they're just not letting her. You know, she's like, hey, girl, so we just got 50 over our normal tip on table tw- I know. Hey, when one door closes, it might have closed on Charlie in the process. When d- one door opens, it opens into Charlie's face into an into another door because that's how Sir is just set up. I know. Uh, Sir is the place where people hang out right at the flapping doors, right? Explains a lot. So now we go back to James and his apartment. Now he's there with Ali and Andros, his father. And he's. You look course, beautiful. You look beautiful. Dad, dad, doesn't she look beautiful, Dad? Oh, yeah, he looks like a, 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 a bit like Princess Di. Yeah. Oh, it's so beautiful. Like, look at her. She got, like, she got lips. She got lips. She got eyes. So, uh. uh so Ali's like, um, yeah, fellow twin flame. <laughs> um, that's from Machine Gun Kelly. So. Um, I've got girls night tonight and it's going to be like Lala and Sheena and Ariana. And it's like, nice. They like invited me. 
Yeah, so I'm gonna go and be like, what's up? She's I gonna like l- Allie's game plan. <laughs> yeah, light them on fire with that personality. So, so James is like, oh, you're so pretty. Be sure you come show me what you're wearing before you go so I can approve of it before you leave here, all right? And she's like, ew. Allie she, looks fucking disgusted, by the way. I mean, Allie's not even able to fake this for two seasons to get a regular spot on this show. No. Allie looks grossed out, okay? And, and he I don't go, blame her. And he's like, when he says, like, I want to see what you're wearing, she goes, oh, I, I don't know what I'm wearing. He goes, oh, The creepiest uh uh-oh in the history of Bravo. So she leaves and we know it's for a while because we hear like three doors locking behind her. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, And Andres is like, oh, yeah, James, I was listening to, what was it? Pomp Sessions. Yeah, I was listening to Pomp Sessions. You've come so far. Has he really? What? No, he has. Has He He has not come far. And you know how I know? Because I looked his ass up on the thing to be like, what's James doing? He's still at See You Next Tuesday, every Tuesday. And someone took a really long video of him playing, I think you've probably seen it, where he's in pajama pants and shirtless, which, thank God for that. He does oh. work that out. And uh, he's, this is literally what he does. He's like, fuck, shit, ass, fart. Fuck, fuck, shit, 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 fuck, fuck, shit, 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 ass, ass. All right. And he's like, oh. <laughs> Meanwhile, like that is what James is doing. He's literally acting like he's playing the Sahara tent at Coachella, and it's Barb from Wisconsin who came in because she's like, oh, I want to see what Sir looks like. Oh, look, there's James Kennedy up there. Folk, folk, shit, shit, shit. It's a little dirty for me. It's a little dirty. Hey, are you okay down there? I feel like I burnt my leg. Do you remember that time I almost started myself on fire in the cab? You know, it's, it's crazy the burning sensations you feel when you talk about this show. One time we were in, the, one time we were in a cab and L.A. was on fire, <laughs> which was not this. funny, you know. But L.A. was literally on fire. And we're just like having a fun conversation in the cab. Meanwhile, the whole side of the freeway is on fire. The Getty Museum is like <laughs> burning to the ground or whatever. And I was like, isn't it weird that it smells so good? I was like, I know this is dark, but that fire smells like... So good. It smells like marshmallows. And he's like, Yeah. That does smell kind of good. And I was like, Ow! Ow! And my marshmallow vape had caught on fire in my pocket. This is a true story. In the back of the Uber, Ronnie was on fire. He was like a chair at Vanderpump's on fire. Lisa's already collected the insurance money on his leg. <sighs> So I learned if you feel like a part of you is on fire, it probably is. You should check. Don't just let that go. Yeah. Like Bruce Springsteen said. So <laughs> he's on fire. Uh. So uh, like Miami. So mm. that's an Adriana Demora reference. It's time for a commercial. It's time for a crap and sc- It's officially Earth Month. And one of my favorite ways to show the planet some love is by shopping sustainably specifically on TheRealReal.com. TheRealReal is the largest and most trusted source for luxury consignment. You'll find everything from Gucci, Prada, and Hermes to Ghani, Staud, and so much more. All for up to 90% off retail. So far, The Real Real has kept over 30 million items in circulation and out of landfills. While saving 3.5 billion liters of water and over 66,000 metric tons of carbon. So, shopping secondhand is one of the easiest and most fun ways to ring in Earth Month. Instead of purchasing something new, do the Earth a favor this month by shopping on therealreal.com. And use our code CRAPINS for 20% off your next order. That's therealreal.com, code CRAPINS for 20% off at checkout. Terms apply. It's called me time for a reason, so working out should work on your time. And you know how I love to work out is with Peloton. I'm a big Peloton person. I literally just broke a personal record two days ago. I'm so proud of myself. And the Peloton tread is so cool because it's pretty compact, even though it's like full size. And you get like a really great 
running or walking workout on it. Work out when it works for you. Peloton works into your day, not the other way around. You don't have to clear your schedule to work out. And whether you have 20 minutes to squeeze in a scenic hike or just 10 minutes for a power walk, Peloton makes it easy to find the me time that you're craving. It's so true. It's more than just a bike. It is that treadmill also. It's so fun, okay? It's not another boring stroll on a treadmill. There are classes for every level. You could try a short scenic hike, a beginner boot camp, or even a power walk to country pop. No matter where you're starting from, Peloton's expert instructors are there to guide you with contagious energy and supportive instruction to really take the guesswork out of working out. Try Peloton Tread risk-free with the 30-day home trial. New members only, not available in remote locations. See additional terms at onepeloton.com slash home dash trial. Commercial. Okay, anyway, so the dad is sitting there. So J- Allie's gone off to hide away. And the dad is like, oh, you know, it's so amazing, it's so amazing. Did that. I still can't. This really supportive dad, he says, I can't believe you can still DJ and not have a drink. <laughs> That's simply impossible. I don't care how much money you're paying me. I didn't see you as having a crazy drinking problem. Binge drinking is a rite of passage. That's what we do, we binge drink, what people tell you not to do, eh? What if they like, hate Beethoven, yeah? I'm motherfucker, was drunk everywhere he went, yeah? <sighs> Chopin, why do you think there's a vodka named after him? Drunk all the fucking time, all right? Spice Girls, they all met in AA. Oh my God, and they literally added music to this that I call drunk clown dad music. Yeah. Because it's just like the drunk dad and the music's like, boom. <laughs> yeah, but James is like, I remember when I told mom I wasn't drinking. She wasn't very happy about that, dad. And he's like, well, you know what? Your mom's great. Well, she had you great. Jennifer. It's Ali, dad. Ali's great. <laughs> Ali's great. Actually, the alley is where I met a girl named Jennifer. That's another story for another time. I'll tell you, I'll tell you when you're drinking more like a real man. <laughs> Was that a fly? I Mr. miyagi that shit. Thank you. Wow. And it didn't even have a drink. Just kidding. <laughs> Sorry. Well, just one more stain for the Watch What Crappens uh, tablecloth. Yep. Over the years. This Sorry, is audience. going on uh, six years old and never been washed. <laughs> it's also the first thing to burn up when this place catches on fire. <laughs> so now we go over to Schwartz and Sandy's mm. uh, because guess what? They're having another tasting. Uh, <laughs> but we get my favorite side character, Brett, on a laptop. He's like, hello, boys. I'm trying to input product into the POS system. And it's extremely difficult to do when I don't know what the food is or the drinks are. He's just typing on Tom. He's like, what, the POS system? So, think about it. It's an acronym. So, Brett's Mm -hmm. like, okay... Um, I'm four months late on rent, so uh, I'm not about to lose my mind about you two fuckwads and your stupid restaurant that I've invested in. So theoretically, after we do the tasting, we can lock in our opening menu on Monday, right? I'm going to need glassware, final prices, and names of things, because I can't just input blue shark drink into the computer. Oh, Sounds okay. like a title to me. What else are you looking for? This is Schwartz and Sandy's. What the fuck do you think <laughs> they're going to name it? So Blue Sh- Shark Drink. So Schwartz is like, oh, yeah, no, of course, of course, yeah, no. Like, we have, we have so much to do with, but it's doable, you know. It's gonna be, it's, we'll do it. And Brett's like, I can't believe you guys are going to a wedding right now. You fucking assholes. So then... A ray of sunshine comes through, and it just makes you see all the promise and fills you with hope. Her name is Katie. (laughs) So Katie comes in. (laughs) Lola Del Rio, were you just released from prison? What is going on with you? (laughs) You sound like you're on that that prison van that's all locked up, like with (laughs) prison chains just passing by on the freeway. You just hear... I know. It's like the prison van just passed again. She sounds like throw mama from the train. 
<laughs> okay. So, <laughs> she said, that's me. <laughs> that's that's uh, me. So, All yeah, right. Katie comes in, thankfully not in any kind of wicker on her head. What the fuck was that? <laughs> oh, boo it. You know that looked uncomfortable. <laughs> You're not booing me, you're booing Wicker on the head. All right? No one deserves that, not even Katie. So, I mean, this is sort of strange because last time we saw Tom was basically antagonizing her at the pool party. So, Schwartz is like, well, Noel, after the pool party, Katie and I hugged it out. Well, I mean, not literally. I don't want to touch her, but verbally, <laughs> verbally, we hugged it out. We verbally hugged it out. That is such a fucking Schwartz thing to say. So then we see a text, and Schwartz is like, I didn't mean to talk about you, Baba. It's just that there's ways, there's ways to just say truce for the big day. Anyway, don't be too upset, bubs. Boys will cuddle you. I don't know who or where, but surely there's some country who's into people like you. It's going to be great. You're an acquired taste. You know, some people drink gasoline, and, I, and that's great. Yeah. I heard that Turkmenistan is sending a, an ambassador who looks like Weird Al Yankovic, but also Timothy Chalamet, so maybe talk to him. <laughs> and then Katie just texts back, Mexico's going to be a girl's trip for me and Christina. Mexico's thrilled. Mexico's thrilled. Mexico's like, build that wall. <laughs> uh. So Schwartz is like, we came to an understanding. You know, there was some empathy there. Uh, so he's like, hi, Katie. Hi, Bubs. How you feeling? And she's like, good. And he, goes, <laughs> and he goes, yeah, you know, it felt really weird chasing you out the other day. I probably should have just stayed inside. <laughs> you mean after you made her cry and run out in the first place? How does this guy get by with so much shit? He just smiles like, wow, I really regret trying to be nice to you after I bullied you in front of all those people. It just, it felt weird to make an effort on something. And speaking of which, not even his legs can make an effort because then he starts like falling over in the bar. And he's like, oh, my legs. They've worked too much today. So I invited Katie to this tasting because, A, I respect her opinion, kind of. And also, it's also my own little way of saying, I care about you and want you to be a part of my life in the restaurant that I spent so much more attention on than you. Yeah. Come by. I just uh, want you to be in my life so I can ignore you more. I know. So uh, wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> he just sits her at a different table. He's like, well, we'll be right with you, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> Just the two of them in the restaurant. Be Send right there. Send the Caesar to Katie so she gets the uh, Caesar, the Caesar reference I made earlier in the argument. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so now it's so now the Jolene comes over. I Is know it Jolene or Jolene? I think it's Jolene. To which I say, false. You're a liar. You're an imposter, Jolene. I don't believe you. I've never known a Jolene. <laughs> the fuck is Jolene? The like. We want to name her Josephine, but we also want to name her after a road. So we're going to call her Jolene. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's not a thing. I'm Southern. That's not a thing, you fucking imposter. <laughs> so Jolene comes in. She's like, hi, I'm Jolene, Greg's wife. And Katie's like, I'm Katie, Tom's soon, ex, soon to be ex-wife. But we're still besties. And Tom's just like, I'm Schwartz. Hug me. <laughs> Here, here, let me take your jacket. Okay, here you go, Katie. Just puts it on her head. So, <laughs> so then Sandoval's like, dude, Schwartz and I knew that when like we decided to stick things out with Greg, we'd have to swallow our pride. And let me tell you something, we know a lot about swallowing these days. No kidding. Theme of the season. Because we're doing so many tastings at Schwartz and Sandy's. Uh, so, uh, Sandoval's like, well, if we can just get home and I'll say yes to whatever Greg wants. Really, Tom? You've done nothing for this fucking restaurant, okay? There's a blue shark drink that fucking Schwartz has been making for six weeks. Where the fuck have you been, porn stash? <laughs> so now it's time for a Vanderpump Rules tradition, and that tradition's called... Girls' night. Girls' night. Girls' lunch. But now it's girls' lunch because Lala's like, I have a baby now, bitch. My life is different. 
So uh, it's Lala, Ariana, and Sheena for lunch. And Lala's like, Sheena, your ass must be hitting right in this jeans, girl. I believe Lala's actual wording was, Sheena, your ass be hitting in those jeans, girl. Very yeah. Lala. Yeah, very she's Lala. very urban. Lala. Yeah. Listen, urban Lala. Listen, she just, she knows the world. Yeah. So then uh, Sheena gives one of my favorite Sheena lines of all time. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a sleeper hit, but for me, it's one of my favorites. How are you? How are you? How are you? So then Allie comes in and she's like, hi guys, thanks for inviting me. And Lala's like, you're always invited. I was like, uh-oh, do not trust Be her. Be careful. She's trying to ruin your relationship and soon your life. Okay? Yep. So Ariana's like, yeah, you know, I've hung out with Allie, like, in group situations, but, like, I guess she's, like, really nice. So, like, I want to hang out with her, but I really don't want to hurt Raquel's feelings, so. Yeah, this whole scene is really awkward. Yeah, very but it's awkward. Also, it also gives us so much hope for the future, because this is when all the girls... Like, usually on this show, it's the, the origins of this show are the bullying girls, the girls bullying Sheena, right? So it's nice to have a season where the girls are like, you know what, let's be really supportive of this new girl. And we know that it's just going to go right back to the origins, and that's what makes yeah. it so delicious. Yeah. You know? They're going to make bullying fun again. Yeah. So Lala's like, I love girl time. I love it so much. I'm all right. My panties are already wet with all this girl time. Can we get a napkin for my stool, please? And Sheena's like, I would really like, I really like Ollie, and I would like to get to know her more as long as it doesn't hurt Raquel's feelings. <laughs> and then it cuts to Lala, and she says, I really don't give a fuck if it hurts Raquel's feelings. <laughs> So Sheena's like, I love girl time also, especially when it's girls that I get along with. This is my favorite Sheena line of the scene. I definitely won't see that. <laughs> <laughs> Patagonian toothfish, darling. The That's original name. She's so into certain things. Like, I definitely won't see that. <laughs> I know what I want, and I want sea bass. So they're talking about girl time and they love it. And Sheena's like, I like girls time when they're not ripping my hair off. That's not really fun. And Lala's like, I love when I get to rip people's heads off in girl times. That's my favorite girl time thing to do. And Sheena's like, well. And so Lala's like, well, <laughs> did you get your head ripped off last night? And Sheena's like, um, well, no, but I, because, but I feel like everyone was trying to buy each other's heads off. It wasn't all about me. It wasn't just like my head that was being bit off, but it was like a lot of people whose heads were getting bit off. Ma'am, your sea bass is getting cold. So Ariana's like, well, and I was going around being like, guys, don't be mean, don't get mean. And Lala's like, well, everyone didn't get a don't be mean. Everyone got one, except for Raquel. <laughs> She didn't get a don't be mean. And, and she, was, she like, was the one who was being mean. Raquel was not being mean. Raquel was being stupid. <laughs> and Raquel was being an extremely awkward model with, the, yes. with her. Uh, I'm walking in the backyard. Do it again. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, uh, did they make a pathway of balance boards? What is wrong with yeah. her? She's like on her own private episode of Wipeout. So Sheena's like, she's like, well, I felt like she was just like standing up for herself. And Lala's like, um, she, she, no. she, she. she tries to plan out how the argument's going to go. And then if it doesn't go how she thinks, and then she's like, <laughs> Sheena's like, that's crazy. Hold on, I dropped my napkin. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely like the sea bass. Definitely like the sea bass. I want the sea bass. <laughs> All work and no play makes Sheena want sea bass. And Lala's like, she's calling me a bimbo while she's in a pink sarong with six inch shields at a pool party in the Valley Valley. <laughs> Yeah. You wear sarongs to pool party. Even I wear a sarong to a pool <laughs> party. La Girl, Lala slut shaming people now. Come on, Lala. You were just talking about squirting like a chocolate fountain last week. 
<laughs> yeah, she's like, she looked like a baby prostitute. And then I was oh, here. Oh, really? Fly. Thankfully, she wasn't in bed talking about how sexy the wild boar who bought her a Range Rover was with an actual baby bottle in her mouth. <laughs> you fucking hypocrite. She's like, can I say something else now? Can I tell you, James is one of the funniest people I've met in my whole life. Okay? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He told me last night about your tarot, about the tarot card reading. Allie, Allie, do you want to talk? It's your turn, Allie. Allie's like, so fun. And Lala's like, yeah, well, anyway, about Raquel, she was, stand- she was like standing right by me. And I'm like, literally, I have her conversation with your vagina. I'm like, get your vagina out of my face, bitch. Can you please back your vagina out of my... When did Lala get so virginal? She spent an entire episode bragging about splurting like a fire hydrant on a hot summer day in New York City. But also, she's acting like they're at the opera. And we see a flashback. It's just Raquel in a bathing suit. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's a bathing suit. It's a bathing suit. The oh, waiter comes baby. over and he's like, would you like some honey? Can you do honey? And she's like, I jizz, honey, baby. <laughs> okay, there she is. She's All back. Right. She's All right. back. So they're trying to, like, talk James up to this Allie chick who Allie doesn't really, I don't think, know how to talk. And um, so Lala's like, well, they told me that you went to see the psychics the other days. So I want to hear about that because I'm, like, so into that. And she was like, yeah. He said that, that you guys were twin flames. Twin flames. I thought that a twin flame is toxic. And Allie's like, no, it doesn't necessarily mean that. It's just like we have a deeper connection. Like we met at the Canyon Club of Agora Hills, which is pretty sacred. And like we're just going to meet in every lifetime. And in every lifetime when we see each other, he's going to say, you look fat. What are you wearing today? Hey, was like, how long do I have to be apart from Allie at the wedding? And I was like, look. She can come to the welcome party. She can come to the after party. She can come to the Sheena's enchilada party. She can come to the make your own crop top party. Yeah, she can come watch me get my hair and makeup done. She can come to the mount a TV in seven minutes or less party. She can come to the Madison Marie Parks Valletta dead naming beach bonfire. The good is gold all you can eat breakfast buffet. Bazooza boost cruise. And also my favorite event. <laughs> That's just sort of like a flex period. So uh, in the corner. Corner. So, Sally's like, um, I barely know Sheena and I would not expect her to invite me to the wedding. And like, I don't know why James is so obsessed with me getting a seat at the wedding, but maybe it's because Raquel is there. Maybe it's just, it's probably because Raquel is there. Am I on the show now? <laughs> So Ariana's like, well, I'm not really sure if you're going to come, but like you're going to come to the tea party at Vanderpump's house on Tuesday, right? And she goes, what tea? I swore off tea parties last year. And then we see a clip of the tea party last year with Lala going, Sheena's, you know why Brock's not allowed to see his kids, correct? Because she slammed, his ex slammed him with a domestic violence charge. I love Sheena taking... Big stances. You know, I think we've learned a lot. Like, you gotta, you gotta, don't just talk about it, be about it. So when Sheena says, I swore off tea parties, I was like, good for you, Sheena. It's an important, important thing to swear off. Tea parties. Sheena will get rid of the tea parties, but not the deadbeat dad or the woman who called her out on it. It's the tea's fault. <laughs> this fucking show. So... <laughs> She's like, all right, well, I guess I'll go because I'm a team player. And who's going to come to the tea party? And, and uh, Ariana's like, well, uh, you know, I don't think Katie's going to come, you know, so wear flats. So if you have to run, you can run. She goes, um, no one's making me run. Ha! Guys, this is how um, Lala is looking at Allie. She's like, It's like when you buy a brand new car and then Toyota comes out with the 2024 model. You're like, fuck you, why didn't you tell me? It's time for a commercial. It's time for... 
Hello there, podcast listeners. My name is Justin Long. I'm an actor, but I also have a podcast called Life is Short. I've been doing it for a couple of years with my brother Christian. We've been having so much fun, in fact, that we decided to do another one, a spinoff show. We should say what the name is, right? Oh, yeah, it's called Life is Shorter. It's a and... very important part of this promo. <laughs> and uh, that's my brother. That's him. That's Christian. And he, you know, he keeps me honest and he is critical in a very positive way, I would say. Um, and he's a brother. He's my uh, yes, brother. And I like to hit all. I like to hit all the information. I like to hit all the points. <laughs> yes. And um, most important of which is the name of our <laughs> spinoff podcast called Life Is Shorter. It's a spinoff on Life Is Short. So if you like puns and podcasts and brothers and us, then you might want to listen on Friday. Yeah. If you'd like to hear more of this banter, check out Life Is Shorter every Friday wherever you're getting your podcasts, wherever you're listening to this. Or a Crappens commercial. So um, now everybody is kind of doing their, hey, this is the beginning of the episode stuff. Uh, Tom Schwartz, I have to say, I can do as many push-ups as Tom Schwartz. Never thought I'd say that. But I think that's why Tom Schwartz somehow maintains likability on this show, even though he's just an utter fucking loser. But, like, just watching the man try and get through a push-up, I relate. He's just like, ah, ah. (laughs) That was so hard. I wonder if that was, like, what their sexual life was like. So, well, we know. Remember when Sandoval bought him that jerk-off kit? And Sandoval's like, here, I'll just wait for you, bro, while you jerk it off upstairs. I got you some cold lube, because I know you like a cold handy. And he's like, yeah, I really do. That lives in my head, that scene. Yeah. And it was just last season. I tried it one time, a cold handy. I was like, who does this? This is horrible. (laughs) Like, how do you even realize that's a thing that you're into? The hard way. Or maybe not. So, Katie, you know what? The, I have to say, in season 10, the producers have finally figured out some things. Like, for instance, there's a scene with Katie and Charlie and Lala going to do paddleboard yoga. And we just see one second of it and we move on. I'm like, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, well, you know how when reality stars get in trouble and they're like, guys, there was like thousands of hours filmed that you didn't see. This is this is those hours. Oh, girl, that almost got bad. If that was full, that would have gone on Ben's child, his computer. Sorry, Ben, almost. It's okay. It's okay. We're safe. So um, now- but yeah, thank God that was cut. So, so we got to... Ru- um, no. So, so. <laughs> no, I want to say the word so. so. I just almost spilled. I'm traumatized. You don't even understand. It's You're very like- scary. So we go to Rocco's in WeHo, and Lala, Brock, and Sheena are sitting down, and Lala's like, yeah, I've been at the beach, and I'm like, I'm sure I have sand all over myself, and my hair, and my ass, and my wet vagina. Sands. It's like nature comes. <laughs> so, Sheena... <laughs> I don't know why Sheena ordering always cracks me up, but Sheena's looking at the menu all like, she's like, I just went to the beach, so I'm like, really? I'm like, I'm going to stand up straight. She's like, <laughs> I would like rigatoni with pasta sauce. But can You're you... How's sh- going to serve the rigatoni, you fucking weirdo? Just order the rigatoni. Could you shape it like sea bass, though? So uh, she's like, wow, Lala, you look like you just came from a photo shoot. Lala's like, thanks, I love that. Thank you so much. So, how many people are coming to your wedding? Um, I'm not sure. 118. 118 and a half because Cousin Joanne is pregnant. <laughs> I'm not sure if I should upcharge her yet. <laughs> so, uh, Brock's like, do we get to keep you with all the activities, Lola? Because we've got you, we've got Raquel, same place, same people. Would you like to speak about it on the microphone? <laughs> Here you are. Lala's like, well, I told Sheenusk that if she, if there's like anywhere where it's like just like a bridesmaids, like I can't hide my energies, okay? You know how I am, okay? So if I'm around Raquel, it's gonna be bad news. But if there's like lots of bridesmaids there, you know, lots of people, if there's an escape route, like I'm gonna be all good. So, so then we have Brock's redemption moment, which is so, it's so unplanned and hilarious. So, First of all, he's wearing like a man bun with a really nice scarf. So I was like, Brock's making an effort. What's about to happen? Yeah. Brock Brock whipped out some very nice soft cotton for his man bun today. What's that, coming down that, the pike? That was an Australian tuxedo, that scarf. 
It's while we're in the bush. So he's like, now listen, Lola, I have stuff to share with you. I got a message yesterday from my kid's mum. And because of the pressure I got from you on that, it really changed everything. So thank you for spending a year calling me a deadbeat dad. It saved my life. <laughs> saved my life. So he's happy you to... You got a message. Was she texting you like, send me my money? <laughs> Until I see those kids with fresh clothes on, I don't want to hear it, okay? I, you can save your monologue. I want pictures of those children with clothes that don't have holes in them, okay? And then I'll consider forgiving your ass, sir. Brock, Brock is so excited. He's waited like 18 months for the show to come back to have this like redemption moment where he gets to say... And this is what my ex-wife said to me in that very important message, Lawler. And then Lala spends the rest of the scene talking about herself, and we never find out what the message was. That's no accident. That was not a kind message. Like, what's she going to say? Oh, wow. Hey, Brock. Just wanted to check in with you. Just wanted to check in and say, you're still a good dad. You're still not there, Brock. You're still in America, sir. Okay. So we see a flashback of Lala coming down on Brock, and she's like, Brock hasn't seen his kids in four years, and how dare you compare my fiancé, who is a stand-up man, to him. <laughs> and Lala's like, now, being in the situation I am with Randolph, I realize that situations are not black and white. <laughs> Truth be told, it was never my place to do that, Brock. You know, truth be told, it wasn't really, but I'm really fucking glad you did do it. Because if that was my friend and they didn't tell me shit, like, I would want to know. I mean, I think Sheena knew, though. Yeah. Actually, never mind. I'm talking myself into a circle. Okay. Well, so, so, I wish I could say I agree, Lawler. But to be honest, that's what good friends do. The more you know, star. I know. He's like, oh, I love when you spent a season torturing me about being a deadbeat dead. Please don't ever fucking do that again, all right? It's me giving you credit. So he does his whole, um, oh, Lala's telling us, okay, here we go. So Lala's like, well, we started getting together. We got started getting the kids together. He's like an amazing husband to Sheena. <laughs> Sometimes I always forget to do it, but it's like, no, you know, my tongue starts pulling back. <laughs> And the way he treats my baby. I really love that, dude. Like, uh, She's going to fuck Brock. That's what I'm going to say. Yep, season 11. Yes. You can know me all you want. Here's why, okay? Here's why. And maybe I shouldn't say she's going to fuck because that puts her in, like, the villain, whatever. They're going to fuck. Okay, and here's why. They just moved in next door to each other in Palm Springs. Do you know what happens in Palm Springs? Nothing. Nothing happens in Palm Springs. There's not even a fucking target out there, okay? Nothing happens. You fuck whoever is next door to you in Palm Springs, okay? I've been even on vacation. You fuck the postman if you can. That's just all there is to do. Okay. I just can't believe this like happened. Like I went out, I trusted them both, and I went out to the restaurant just to order some sea bass, and I came back. And there they were naked together, and I was like, but I brought you all sea bass because I'm a team player. And Mama was going to be like, whatever, Sheena. It wasn't even a big deal. It's not like it was an emotional affair. <laughs> I'm not a mistress. I'm, like, I'm calling it. Okay, so Brock's like, oh, I have a piss, and I'm not proud of that, but I'm never going to make those mistakes again. I promise you I learned from them, and I think we got here because you had your experiences, right? I don't mind being held to a standard. I want, I want everyone to hold... Okay, I'll hold you to a standard. What is your job, sir? What is it? Um, chief videographer of Sheena when she's on a mountain wall. Chief, are you vlogging me right now? So Sheena's like, Lala and I have made like so much progress in our friendship. Like I have even talked about getting a house here together with her and like raising the girls here together and like having unconventional modern family sort of life, making enchiladas together, trying on halter tops together, mountain climbing together, but like in a room at the same time while Brock vlogs us. There's like so many possibilities. That's my face the whole time. I was just like, no, mm -mm, no. 
don't do this. And then they have like a fake cry off where Brock's like, uh, uh, babies. I'll tell you, I could talk about anything. If I talk about it, I talk about it. I want to cry. And Lala's like, I have a baby too. Have yeah, a baby. Let's have a baby. I know babies. I've seen babies. And Lala's like, I just need to maintain being a strong, independent woman. Swear my daughter will be like my mother may not have been able to provide me with the chins. But she was definitely a good mom. <laughs> so. I'm sorry, I woke up like this. I can't help it. You All woke day, up like I was this. Considering. <laughs> you woke up like this. I was like, should I call a teledoc and ask for something? I don't know what the fuck's wrong with me. So now we go over to Villa Rosa. The most oh. elegant Rosa Villa. In all the land. It's Lisa Vanderpump's house, and she's having a tea party, and people are showing up. James has his, like, goody two-shoes voice on for now, because he's, like, a little bit sober. He's like, hello. Hello, Lisa. Hello, Lisa. But first, we get my favorite of Lisa walking around saying hello to all of her animals. She's like, hello, Hanky. Hello, Panky. Hello, Diamonds and Pinot Noir. We'll work on that one until we get the new rosé figured out, darling. Hello, Snooky and Tookie and Pookie. The, the birds up there. And the, I'm the only woman in Beverly Hills with penguins in her tree. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, people are showing up. There's pump teenies being served. James is... Yeah, and James, James is like, course. this is my first Pomptini in three years. And of course, we see a flashback to him at Sir going, Pomptini! Hey, Jaxie boy, shouldn't you be getting to work over there? You're a bartender, you old fat fuck. All right? Stop talking to me and make a Pomptini! Pomptini! Still works. It still works. It's true. Uh, so then Ken uh, comes out and he's like, uh, Johnny, I'm wearing a hat, Johnny. Why would you copy me? Why would you copy my hat? I'm the like, like, best I'm people the, in hats. Uh, well, guys, said I was going to go hat. ridiculous walking I'm, around this fucking house. Well, I told hat, Rocio, hat. put the hat up for me. You know how long it takes me to go Where's upstairs to change my hat? It's no. changed a long time. I told Pandy, don't, don't wear the hat today, hat. wear the shawl. Oh, fuck is it? And now why are you wearing a hat off? too? What's happening with the hat? Don't you? What's going on? This is crazy. It's a hat. It's a hat. So LVP's like, oh, you're on doggy duty, Ken. Someone please wheel Ken away. His batteries are low. He's like, <laughs> I also like that he's wearing one of her hats, too. It has, like, diamonds and, like, pink flowers on it. So uh, we find out that this is no ordinary tea party. This is a surprise bridal shower for Sheena. I really approve of this, and I respect this friend group for being so polite about saying, you don't get fresh everything being married again, bitch. Okay? We've already done this for you. You're getting a tea party this time. Okay? Have fun with that. So, uh, Lala's like, oh, look at these. Oh, LVP's like, look at these. Look at this Lala. And Lala's like, look at your boobies. Yeah, Lisa Vanderpump. Oh, my God. I just... I'm so sorry. I just left a puddle all over your backyard. It's fucking disgusting. Surprise! Oh, oh! I thought it was Sheena, you stupid fat fuck. I thought you were Sheena. It's what? So the plan is that when Sheena walks in, they're going to sing Good as Gold, which I feel like every year there's some event where they have to sing this to Sheena, and we can tell... By because, the way, yeah, by, <laughs> by the way they sing it, you guys. Okay, you know how when people sing Happy Birthday, you're like, this is the most hated song in the world. <laughs> Everyone hates this song. They hate Good as Gold more, okay? okay? Yeah. Sheena walks in and they're like, Because good you're good, good as gold. gold. Because yeah. you're good, good as gold. gold. It's like that one person trying because to harmonize terribly. Because yeah. you're good yeah. as gold. Good as gold. And Sheena's looking like she's a coach on The Voice. She's like, yeah! Yeah, you're doing it! My team rocks! 
I turned around for all of you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, my chair's going the other way. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they're like surprised. It's like, oh my god, that was so kind. <laughs> Ariana's like, it's next to impossible to surprise Sheena because she has all of her locations on her phone. <laughs> <laughs> so what were you doing at Buco de Beppo earlier? Were you at the Capri room? It's like, to be honest, I'm only half surprised because my sister's car kind of gave it away. Of course. <laughs> so um, now LVP is talking to Schwartz or eating. You know, it's like milling around party time. So LVP is like, Schwartzy, where'd you get that small, tiny little plate, darling? Oh, oh, there's there are bigger plates. <laughs> Where'd you get the big plate? And she's like, from that large stack of <laughs> large <Big> plates. <laughs> Has there ever been a better metaphor for Tom Schwartz? <laughs> Eating from the little plates when there's a giant stack of free big plates. So then Lala is talking to James, and she's like, "Is Ali invited to the wedding yet? You could ask. You should ask Sheena because she really likes Alice." And James is in these pink sunglasses, and you can just tell right away this is an off the wagon day, right? Yeah, like, way hey. off the wagon. He's off the wagon, and the wagon rolled over him a few times. He's like, <laughs> "She loves Ali, does she? She loves a Canada." Lala's like. I mean, I'm wondering if, like, maybe Ali's not invited because Raquel doesn't want her. He's like, <laughs> oh, yes, It's like, really? Did I just nail it? And he's like, you nailed it. You nailed it or you Dr. Seuss or something like that. You know, Dr. Seuss isn't a detective. Does he know that? <laughs> uh, just like green eggs and ham, what fat people eat. Ali not being invited isn't about invitations or the price or how many people are going to be there or how many bloody Salisbury steaks are being ordered, all right? This is about what Raquel wants. It's a complete out of body experience to be around my ex fiance all the time. Also, I'm coked out, out of my head right now. He's like, Lola, should I ask Ali to marry me in Mexico? Oh, wait, wait, wait. A really important moment happened. We cut, there's this really random scene. We cut to Ariana and Sheena, and there's a flower. And Ariana's like, hey, smell this one. Hyacinths have the best smell. And she just goes, it smells like a flower. <laughs> and then the Bravo editors do this. <laughs> like, oh, no. The beginning of the end. <sighs> so Lala's like, I'm so fucking done, James. You moved on so quickly. I don't even think it matters who's out who it is at this point. And he's like, that's not fair. Besides, payback's a bitch. Wasn't in Mexico. <laughs> so funny. So, La yeah, Lala's like, oh, I see. So you want to you wanna end by ask her, you want to, you know, pop the question as payback. He's like, no, I mean, no, no. I just thought, you know, I just thought I had. I mean, like, but like, honestly, you know, I do things big. Like, oh, buh, 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 buh. I was like, what the fuck is wrong with him? <laughs> So then we go over to Sheena and LVP, and she's like, oh my god, thank you so much for having a tea party for me. It's not really tea, because I'm, like, traumatized for tea after last year. Do you remember that? That was, like, terrible. It was, like, the worst day of my life, but this is, like, amazing. What happened to that other tiny little horse? Did I die? That one looks different. <laughs> and LVP uh, is like, darling, I wanted to do something for you, you know, because I couldn't come to Mexico, and I'm sorry, I missed some words there. I couldn't be bothered to come to Mexico, I mean, come on. Mexico, darling. I had many things to do that weekend. I am installing a giant pendulum to swing from pump to tom tom and back and forth. So yeah, she that's a destination. I get it. Yes, darling. Like hell. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, how sweet of you to think that it's hard for me to fly down from LA to the cusp of Mexico. You sweet thing. On Nicolene Aero Puerto lines, darling. <laughs> Couldn't do it. So uh, LVP tells us, if you want a successful marriage, don't ask me to be involved in your wedding. I mean, look at Sheena. She got engaged in my house. She doesn't even have a Barker lounger left from that one. <laughs> and Tom and Katie, I officiated their wedding. He smelled like river. We should have always known. 
So then Sheena, who totally did this shit on purpose, goes, oh my god, we're gonna have anniversaries the same week! Oh, oh, yes, yes. At least as I try to back away. Yeah, it's gonna be the same week, because, like, yours is, like, the 28th, and, like, mine's the 23rd, and Bedora's the 27th, and Ronnie's birthday's the 25th. <laughs> Well, we could like, oh, that's good. yeah, like we could like share an anniversary. We could go on like a road trip. Like we'd have dinners all the time. We could be like best friends. Like we could basically like move in together. You want to move into my commune with Lala? All right, slow down uh, and take one step backward for every second that passes until <laughs> you near I, the edge of the infinity pool and disappear forever and she, ever. Sheena, I'm terribly sorry. This is a fascinating conversation, but uh, I have an engagement with Kyle Richards and Teddy Mellencamp that I must get to. Goodbye. (laughs) So, um, Brock, let's see. So, Brock comes in in a dress scrunchie, which I think is nice. Yeah. He's making an effort. Uh, And uh, he's like, this is Ariana's doing, isn't it? I could not anything, Sheena. She's like, oh, my God. I was like... I didn't go through his phone, you guys, but, like, he doesn't hide anything, and I know that because I got through his phone. <laughs> uh, so James and Sandoval are playing ping pong, you know, and Ariana's, like, taking pictures with the gays, and then Raquel sits down next to Schwartz, and Raquel's like, wow, like, so your restaurant opening is very soon, huh? Yeah, the 31st. I hope you can make it. I think everything's okay. I mean, I hope. I mean, I feel like we're suffocating, but like that's mostly because Katie was there for about 15 minutes the other day. And <laughs> we saged it, but we made a pact not to bitch about it anymore. But I can bitch to you, right? She's like, um, yeah. Yeah, I'll be there. I mean, I may have this like Lady Stockton pageant to go to, but we're going to see. I'm having a birth certificate made. Just cheating to still get into fucking competitions. You aged out, Raquel, okay? <laughs> You're lucky we're not calling Shelly Tur over here with a fucking full, filled up syringe for you. So, um. <laughs> so, uh. That kind of night, guys. Raquel's like, I know, it's just gonna get worse. It's Friday like, night. I, I can't help it. <laughs> <laughs> we have. The venom is, is built up. It's a surprise Raquel has aged out of beauty pageants night. <laughs> <laughs> so um, she's like, I love that Schwartz and I have got to the place where we're tight. And who knows, maybe we'll even be tighter in the future. But tighter sounds like vaginal, though. Boo. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I know that there's like a general boo for Raquel right now, but also <laughs> just bad line boo. Just bad, bad, line bad lying. Boo. Bad lie, bad, bad lie boo. Okay, you're on Vanderpump Rules. You have to bring your lying game up. Uh, so James is watching everything all pissy, right? Uh, because Raquel, they're doing this weird flirting, but there's no chemistry here. I don't know who's no. buying this, okay? No. But Raquel's one. like, we're going to be in Mexico, so I think the only thing that we can really do is have fun, right? And he's like, that's a great attitude. I love having fun. Yeah, very stoic. Like, that's not stoic at all. But So James is like, short, short. Okay, I have a question. In ping pong, if I, if I shoot a net on the serve, is that, is that still legal? Short, can you tell me what this is? It's like, whoa, James. They're flirting right here, and James is like two feet away pretending to play ping pong. So he's like, oh, really? Not listening to anything at all? Just playing ping pong. Yeah. Hey, Schwartz, tell me about your projector lamp. Get the fuck away from me, you motherfucker. I'll fucking give you in your face. I, lo- I love looking at the galaxy, but on my ceiling. Oh Excuse my. me, I've got a question about ping pong. So if the ball hits the net, but still goes over, is that a let? Is that a let? Yeah, it's a let. And Sandoval's like, dude, I didn't know that. Honestly, like, what the fuck? Right? You flirting with Raquel right in front of me? You look absurd, mate. Absurd. Right? You're desperate and absurd. Fat. You look desperate and absurd. Fat. <laughs> All right? You look like the last 30 minutes of the Elvis movie. <laughs> right? 
So Sheena goes to Ariana and she's like, hi, so is anyone else coming to this party by any chance? And Ariana's like, well, the invitation was extended to Katie, but she did say no. And then we go over to see what Katie's up to this fine afternoon. Guys, it's a trough of dirt, first and foremost. (laughs) She's in Santa Monica at Christina Kelly's house, okay? And they sound like those two ladies from SNL a long time ago, the PBS, the PBS house. <laughs> Katie's like, tomorrow is Tom and I's anniversary. Wow, how's that feel? It feels kind of weird. Like, it would have been like six years. Wow. But like, I would be remiss to not acknowledge. You'd be so remiss. Anniversary. Yeah. And it's like, I you'd, think it's important, you know? Yeah, you'd be like, Little Miss, Little Miss, Little Miss, Remiss. I messed up the pun, but you get it. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to worry about Sheena or Raquel, because, like, this is so much bigger than their stupid faces. So much bigger. That's stupid. This is probably the biggest thing happening in America right now. Yeah. Like, Tom and I might have dinner to celebrate, because we're, like, closing our house. That's so so big, too. That's huge. That's a huge thing to happen. Thank you, because, like, in Mexico, like, we'd be in Mexico, but, like, we closed our house in America. Oh, my God. So, this is international now. It's huge. I love this soil that you bought. This is really good soil. This soil is so good. This soil is huge, I have to say. This soil is, like, moist. I would be remiss if I didn't tell you that this is 30% organic matter. God, I love your I love your moist organic matter. Thanks. It's soft but absorbent. Hey, what's going on with your sandwich shop? Have you come up with any sandwiches yet? It's really hard for me to think of sandwiches while I'm so enmeshed in your like wet organic mass. Sorry, you got to follow the sketch. <laughs> so now we go to back to the back party. Back to the tea party. They're setting up croquette, and Brock is moving the balls around, which I don't know that Brock knows how to play croquette. He's I using can't his prove feet, him so wrong, I would say no. I don't know how to play it either, but I had a feeling it was being set up wrong. I'm like, that looks like an inefficient shape for a game. So and- he's setting the balls, and Sheena goes... Rock, that's the rules. <laughs> <laughs> the rules for croquet, okay, but it's such a complicated set of rules. It's so hard. So then, meanwhile, James is at a table, and now he's like out of his mind. All you hear is like clattering, and everything's like. He's like. And then all of a sudden. And he's like, guess what? Lisa's like, James, are you, are you drunk? He's like, uh, excuse me, excuse me. If I were drunk, would I be able to do this? I don't think so. I'm holding a plate. All right. If I were drunk, could I put a plate on my head? All right. If I were drunk, would I be able to put another plate? I don't think so. Wait. If I were drunk, would I be able to put a plate on your plate? If I were drunk, would I be able to put a plate... On your head while you're putting a plate on your head. If I were drunk, if theoretically I were drunk, I don't even know what's up there, but I know I can do it because I'm not even drunk. I just think I proved that I'm the most sober person here because I stacked dishes on my head. James, darling, what are you doing? You're like Sid from Sid and Nancy right before the bell tolls, all right? Put the dishes down, darling. Fine China! He just yells, fine China. And uh, LVP is like, sit down, you're making me nervous. How do you put up with him, Lala? And she's like, he's on a journey. And I said, I'll go on his journey with him. And she's like, oh, God, offer less to him on this journey than you did the last one. All right, Lala. All right. Listen, he's on a journey, and his journey is against the person I don't like, so I'll be on the journey too, okay? And Vanderpump goes, uh, well, James is like, I can't do that. I've got a girlfriend, a gorgeous girlfriend. I just licked her and made her change her shirt about five minutes ago. She's and like, LVP's like, you had a girlfriend before then? That didn't make a difference. 
No, it's different. It's different though. It's different, okay? Because I've learned lessons, all right? Okay, I do think that Ali is the one, okay? I do think that I'm gonna go put some babies in her. Okay, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna open up her vagina with my penis and put sperm in there, and that's gonna make a baby. And it's gonna be a skinny baby, not a fat slut baby. <laughs> Why are so many babies fat? They think they're, think they're special? Hey, Gerber, why don't you put them skinny baby in your stupid jar? Start a, start a workout company for babies. No more fat babies. Thin baby. All right? <laughs> fat fucking babies. Beautiful. Be- we'll make some blue-eyed goddesses babies. <laughs> Lisa goes, you sound like a dictator. <laughs> Lala's like, can you just say that you want a family one day? How about you just say that, James? And he's like, yeah, I'm going to make babies. I'm going to have blue-eyed babies. Blue-eyed, blonde-haired, thin-only babies. All right? James. James. He's like, what? What? Listen, when you talk sometimes, you sound like a 16-year-old with all these dreams. And, like, bringing a child into the world is no joke. And I know that because I have a baby, in case you didn't know. He's like, oh, oh, my God. Oh my How God. hard can it be? Oh. Brock has brought Brock. one into the world. Brock did it. Brock? Brock did it. He brought a baby. I mean, this I... man brought a baby into the world and he's kicking croquet balls. He's That's putting soccer. babies into random people and then leaving countries. No one's saying anything about that. Lisa's like, oh God. <laughs> he's like, there's facts and then there's facts. All right. <laughs> And his dad's just watching from a nanny cam, like, that's my boy. He's fucking black. And Lala's like, you're acting out of pockets right now. Let's bring it down. And she tells us, anybody who takes time away from drinking because they feel it's a problem, and then they go back to thinking they've conquered it, I worry. Because alcohol is used for fun moments, sad moments, having Baby's moments. <laughs> Let's admit it. Like, that took a lot. That, and, that took a handle. That and making reality handle. TV shows. So Sandoval's yeah. basically like, hey, everyone, you know, after this tea party's done, let's go to Schwartz and Sandy's, where I'm sure everyone wants to go. An unfinished bar <laughs> with, like, some, like, Peruvian ceviche we've been trying to peddle for five weeks. That's right. And James goes, tom, tom. <laughs> tom, tom. Tom, tom. So they they all head over to Schwartz and Sandy's where Brett is there. He's standing behind the bar like, oh, well, we were supposed to have a meeting, but I guess we're going to have a party. Great. I've been waiting here for six hours. Is each one of your friends going to input an item into the POS system? (laughs) Sounds like a night to me. So uh, Schwartz is like, we're not going to dip into the Schwartz and Standy's stock. This is from me. I went to Beth Moa by myself. This is a, I love you to Sheen and Brock. Well, I mean, we're paying for the bartender and the busboy and the liquor and the ice. <laughs> Whatever. Let's pour it down Brock's throat. Yeah. So um, Sandoval's like, all right, I'm going to stand on the table. All right. To those who haven't been here, welcome to Schwartz and Sandy's. We're opening on the 31st. Mama Mia. Here I go again. Mama. And then James says actually his best line of the episode. He goes, wait a second. This place isn't open yet. Are you actually kidding? How many soft openings are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> so Raquel and Lala are, t- well, Raquel's, Lala's standing there getting a soda. And Raquel comes up and she goes, um, I guess I'll break the ice by saying, ow, oh, oh my God, I actually broke ice. <laughs> Lala's like, hi, how are you? Okay, you don't have to pick up the ice. They've got bus boys. They don't have bus boys? Oh, okay, no. never mind. Good, so, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Is Katie coming? No, she's at home hanging out doing something very important right now. Cut to Katie at home, slowly making tea. <laughs> but I'm a bitch, I'm a lover, I'm a son, I'm a son, 
I'm a knitter, I'm a saint. I do not in the flag. Yeah, that, what they said, all right? The dogs are watching. The dogs are like, honestly, just take us to Schwartz and Sandy's at this point. <laughs> They're like, please, can Auntie Dorit pick us up? <laughs> 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 How dare you? How dare you? Dr. John Sessa will be on your case. Okay, so Sheena is ordering Jameson, which she should have watched out because James came. Like, literally right after. She's like, come on, from Jameson. He's like, hello, we're right. It's like, whoa. So she's, he's like, oh, how lovely it was earlier, wasn't it? Tea party. Did you see how my plate tricks? Quite amazing, actually. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, great introductory to the weekend in Mexico. Now, listen, obviously, Ali's coming to Mexico. You know Ali, the gorgeous one. Lick marks on us. <laughs> Lick marks. Changes the shirt about five times a day. Because she loves me. That one. Um, if you're asking if she can come to the actual wedding ceremony, the most coveted invitation of 2022, the answer is, ah. Uh. Yeah, but... Why are listen to Raquel? Raquel doesn't have a say in this, all right? It's oi, 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 oi. It's oh. not that. It's not oh. that. Who's that? I'll tell you what it is. We reserved... Four tables for kangaroos. <laughs> and we have to make sure they can make it through customs. If not, then Ellie is welcome. So then we cut to um, another really awkward flirting scene with Schwartz and uh, Raquel. So she's like, hey, I heard something like you have something like some kind of art installation. And he's like, yeah, you want to see it? It's like a portal to another universe. And she goes, I want to do the portal. <laughs> so he's like, I'm taking Rick out of the portal. I'll be right back. So we go see this portal. It's a mirror on the ceiling. It's, it's like going to the sharper image. With visible LED strips taped under it. Yeah. And he's like, just look up and deep breathe. <laughs> So that is the nicest check your nose for Coke boogers before you go back out into the <laughs> restaurant mirror I've ever seen. You're like, all right, I'm ready to go. I wouldn't know. So then meanwhile, while they're checking for Coke boogers, James is pleading his case still for Ali to be there. And so he, he pulls a good card. He's like, just remember, remember when we were having my engagement party and there's a lot of skinny people there to celebrate us. And you two <laughs> sort of on the fat side. You guys were so in love that you wanted to get engaged right then and there, you know? And Brock's like, well, well I mean, well, you know, let's give it a hard maybe, a hard maybe. And Sheena's like, um, just hold on, because, like, it's just like I'm half listening, but I'm also in visualizing the seating chart I have. Hold on. I'm just going to visualize for a second here. Okay, I've visualized. I think we have a seat. I think we have a seat. Oh, so then we go to Schwartz and Raquel uh, with their cheesy flirting. And he's like, well, it sounds like a gross pickup line. But yeah, close your eyes. Let the sound waves wash over you. So they're deep breathing right in front of the men's room door. which, Yeah. And uh, Sheena sees them. She's like, what the fuck are they doing? <laughs> the girls told me one of your happy places is going into your room and listening to EDM. And guess what? I have a star projector, too. She's like, Oh my god, really? He's like, yeah. He's like, oh my god, I have a star projector too. You want to fuck in the bathroom? He's like, no, but I'll listen to you pee. She's like, okay. <laughs> I love John Summit. Is that his name, John Summit? Ron Summit? Paul Summit? Mr. Summit? So, John Summit of the Summit family. I just only know it from Southern Hospitality, where they're like, ah, oh, we're going to go to Tampa to see John Summit play. So, now it's the next day. And uh, it's time to get ready to go to Mexico. The Mexico trip is happening. It's happening. It's all happening right now. They're packing. Sheena's packing. James is James and Allie are packing. He's like, you're coming to the Latin. Okay. You're going to be dancing with me. You're going to be dancing with me. You stupid slut. You stupid slut. Come dancing with me. And she's like, good job asking again. Good job. Yay. 
So then we go to Tom and Ariana's and Schwartz and Sandoval are on the phone and Schwartz is like, I was like, why do I have a sweater? And I just saw myself in my mirror and I'm going to keep my shirt on the whole time. And Sandoval's like, bro, come on. What are you going to wear matching outfits with fucking Katie? Give me a break. Let's go find a fucking strop potter to put on your head and call it a day already. <laughs> God damn it. So then we go over to um, a song that's saying living life way up high. Which leads us directly into Christina and Katie, which you can't say the musicians don't have a sense of humor on this show. Hey, Katie. So Christina's like, hi, hi, are you getting ready? I'm so excited that I'm going to get to come on this trip to Mexico with you. I'm so excited that you're coming. I had such a crazy night. I stirred that tea for like 45 seconds. That is crazy. That's effing crazy. Yeah. It was a crazy night of oolong. And Meredith Brooks. So then we go... Was it over. leaf tea or was it bag tea? Well, it started off as bag tea, but I got a little wild, so it sort of became loose tea. Oh, my God. Yeah. So you got bag so hot that it made you loose? Yeah. That's the bag hot. exploded all over the hot water. God, that sounds like such hot tea. That tea was so hot, it was dribbling down my throat. <laughs> Did you swallow it? I did, and I burned my throat. Sometimes the burn lasts, but every time you feel it burn, you just remember how good it was the first time around. Anyway. Sometimes burns are worth it. That's why I have this cool thing on my arm. (laughs) Playa del Carmen! So we go to Playa del Carmen, and Sheena arrives, how Sheena arrives everywhere. We've arrived! (laughs) Yes. And this is really good because we're in Sheena's home country and she can finally she can finally show us more of her culture. Everywhere she goes, she's like, gracias. Gracias. My stomach is a pit of nerves. It's like butterflies, mariposas, if you will, and excitement. <laughs> Mariposa. Mariposa. Did Kristen go to this wedding? Do you guys know? Is she gonna? Are we gonna see? She her? was undercover as a cater waiter. She had like a little mustache and like a bow tie. More hey, orders. More orders. Taco. Ta- taquitos. Por favor. Uh, so it's like I'm gonna be out back. So then we go to the duty free shop where the guys are getting you know drinks to get wasted, and James and Allie are like doing that twisted wrist things to give each other drinks. They're like, oh, oh, which is how no. No people in a good relationship actually drink. No. <laughs> those people always, and that's how those date lines start. They're like, they were so in love, the perfect yeah. couple. And you just see them like. Yeah. Brittany and Kevin Federline probably drank like that. Yeah. So. <laughs> too soon. Too soon. Like, too soon. That's, that shit's still too soon. Too soon. I, I, you know what? I feel you. I went, I went dark there. It's so about, let's yes, see. Um, they're getting welcome cocktails and all that stuff. And Schwartz sees drinks and he goes, what in the tarnations? <laughs> so then um, <laughs> basically they're all looking at their room assignments and Lala and Katie are standing together. And Lala's like, oh my God, you're like really far away. And Katie goes, yeah, it is far. And she goes, I mean, 1706 and you're 3303. And Katie goes, yeah, it doesn't sound near. And then we cut to Sheena going, yeah, I had her move to a different tower. And X off the preferred club list. You know what? Why did we never think of this? I spent all week being like, she should give up the room or whatever. We're all arguing back and forth. Sheena, see, Sheena knows. Yeah, Sheena. She's like, like, you can stay at my resort. I'm putting you over there on the ocean. <laughs> I, I crossed her off the preferred club list. I also I also called Costco and canceled her membership there. So she's like, <laughs> yeah, she's no longer part of the Her- the Hertz Rewards program. <laughs> Enjoy driving Alamo, bitch. So she's like, we have dinner at night, and then we're going to a patio, and then there's a sports place, and that has a pool. And James is like. Oh. I've got a pool connected to my room. Sick. <laughs> that is sick, right? All right, who else? Oh, Raquel, you don't have a pool to your room, do you, Raquel? Huh? 
Raquel's like, um, no, because I don't, I don't want random people swimming up to my door. I'm like, well, you know your room isn't in the pool, right? <laughs> but she's had, to be fair, she's had some weird poolside experiences on this show. Remember that first episode where that guy was like, you're in my chair. And he was hot, but he also didn't show his I still think that face. was Jax. That guy that was in the robe. And they just blurred his face out to not give him another second on TV. The blur was actually on the floor, and he just sort of snorted it up to his face. Jack snorted the blur off of the screen. <laughs> he snorted the blur off of someone who didn't sign a release. <laughs> that hotel Ziggy's really got it going on. <laughs> Best blur in town. <laughs> <laughs> so Raquel's like, well, also, I knew that you and Ali were going to have a swim up, so I didn't want to be, like, you know, like, invading your privacy or, like, a.k.a. you invading my privacy. And uh, she goes, can you even imagine being next door to them? It's probably, like, banging up against the wall and stuff. Gross. And then it cuts to James going, I want to tongue kiss you. I want to tongue, tongue kiss me right now, Ali, right in front of Raquel. Do it. Stick a tongue in me. No. I'm going to put my tongue in you. Oh, God, you're about to get baby right in you. Won't give me a vagina? Putting it in your ear. Putting it in your ear. Come on. No ear. one's watching. No one's watching. Come on. We could do it right now. No one's watching. Do it, do it right you know now. I get nervous when people see us. So transparent. So embarrassing. He's like, no one's watching. You're in a hotel lobby. <laughs> I know. On TV. So then Brock is like... Brock is like, all right, everyone. Glad you're all here. Good to see all my friends, my families, my koalas. Now, before you go, all right, everyone, let's get the hands in the middle. Wait, do we have, we have a, a hashtag for this wedding? Do we have something like that? A hashtag? Pay your child support. Hashtag pay your... Oh. Uh, oh. Uh, I think, I think, okay, we're going to workshop that one. Hashtag I just squirted on Mexico. All right, all right, all right. Don't need any of that either. Hashtag sea bass. Hashtag I'm really into wet soil. All right, I don't even know who you are. <laughs> all right. Hashtag French kiss me, please. No one's watching. Uh. So they put it. They put their hands in the middle, and they're like, three, two, one. Honey, do. <laughs> Honey, I do. I mean, honey, I do. Imagine if she's doing a hashtag for honeydew. (laughs) My favorite melon. So, Schwartz. (laughs) (laughs) Guys, wait. Hold on. This is serious. I know this is a wedding weekend, but it's also a celebration of honeydew. So, please respect it. (laughs) Yes. Darling. (laughs) <laughs> oh, so um let's see so shorts is like okay i can't come tonight because me and katie are gonna have this thing in mexico where we're gonna like celebrate selling our house and me never having to see katie again so i'm not gonna be there and sheena's like oh, okay because it's just like the first night in mexico because this isn't like a big deal it's just like the welcome welcome deal it's like the first enchilada I'm like it's not like the whole enchilada i don't like yeah. see tomorrow I'm totally chill with you not coming to this dinner party that I planned about 14 months ago. It's totally cool. So then LVP calls Ariana and Katie, and she's like, hello. They're like, hello, and it's just FaceTime of nothing, and then (laughs) a face fades in. It's like, shh, hello, darlings. (laughs) It's me, Lisa Vanderpump. Did your little wings take you all the way to Mexico? (laughs) I wanted to call you because obviously in business, sometimes things don't work out. Wink, wink. Oh, business manila envelope, manila envelope. I think she's falling for the misdirection. Unfortunately, sometimes you want a building and you cannot buy it. Oh, it's terrible when that happens. Wink, wink, wink. Sometimes you wish you just knew a little Monopoly man to say, don't pass, go, do not go to jail, do not collect $200. But you don't. All you know is a lady with tiny little dogs made of metal (laughs) that move around a board. (sighs) Katie and Ariana are like, "Uh uh-huh, uh-huh. I get to the part where you say we got the room. We got the... (laughs) All right, you've got to really go. You've got to, you can have a sandwich shop time. Oh my God, we can have a. Now, all they have to do is show an interest in sandwiches. So. <laughs> I know they were like, oh my God. 
We're going to be working in a sandwich shop soon. <laughs> wow. Okay. So, ham and cheese. That's a good starting place. Yeah. Hang up the phone. People's about to call. All right. So, um, Ariana, Ariana and Sandoval go to their room. And Sandoval's like, oh, two beds. How'd that happen? <laughs> I know. What a funny kawinky dink. So um, then Raquel is setting up her projector. She's like, I love the sound of those projectors. It's like Pavlov's dog. If I hear that sound, I'll go straight to sleep. I love that. I have one of those. It sounds like Ken, like dawdling around in the kitchen. Does yours have a little hat? And then it gets mad when you wear a hat? (laughs) Has a little uh, Rod Stewart flat (laughs) ironed wig on top. So Uh, we, we have one of these cringy moments also. God. This, this season is really fucking with me. Ariana's like, I'm so happy to be in Mexico. Nothing to get in the way of my quality time with Tom. He's my prisoner. It's fucked up. It's fucked up. And then we see in another room, Tom Schwartz is setting up his own projector. Yeah. So then uh, it's Allie and James in their room. And Allie's like, this room is sick. And James is like, I, I thought it was dumb, though. You know, I thought Raquel didn't want to swim over. So I guess it's not a sick room, is it? Because Raquel doesn't like it. Raquel doesn't want to swim to our room. I guess our room is stupid. Allie's like, do we have to bring up Raquel every two seconds? Can I put my twin flame in the pool and put it out? He's like, change your clothes, change your clothes, do it again, do it again, come your hair, come your hair, come your hair, come your hair. So then we go to the restaurant, and everyone's gathering for Shana's first night. Hello. And in walks Lala with Christina. With Christina. <laughs> that is bold. That is bold. It's bold. This is our patio. How dare you? Excuse me, you do not have access to the preferred club rewards program? <laughs> and she's like the fact that Christina's walking into my welcome dinner party talking about wet soil is not okay <laughs> so so she was like because you know what years ago at my first wedding not only did Stassi and Christina say that my dress was the ugliest effing thing they've ever seen they said something that was more hurtful <laughs> So then we go to Stas- the Stasi clip of um. <sighs> you thought everyone was going to join in with you there, didn't you? <laughs> and they didn't. <laughs> <laughs> we cut like- to Stasi, and she's like, "Oh my god, this dress—it's like a skanky girl's quinceanera." And then Sheena's like, I don't talk about this a lot, and you might not have guessed this from Sheena's uh, enchilada plates, but (laughs) I'm half Mexican, and for them to take such a special event in Spanish culture and to make it sound trashy or skanky or low classes, it actually hurt me. (laughs) Well, yes, that was shitty. Now, I love a quinceanera. You know, I grew up in, I grew up on a border town. So I can't say that me making fun of a, a bad quinceanera dress is bad. I can't say it's bad for Stassi. (laughs) I'm kidding. It's bad for me, too. Uh, Gracias. But um, I do have to say you're a little late, Sheena, because uh, Stassi's already been called out for way worse. It's like now we're just kind of minimizing, you know? Uh, so then we go to Sheena texting and Ariane, Ta- Ari- d- whatever. We're going now on with now this we have like party. this really kind of like weird thing that happens. You know, we're coming into the final sort oh, of like yes, sort okay. of final scene of the show, and there's like this weirdness. And James is in a huff. He's like, oh, 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 I, almost, I already almost got into a fight with a fat fuck, some fat person. <sighs> Ariane's like, person I, I know, uh, I know. And goes, yeah, but. It wasn't me that really did that, actually. It wasn't me who got into a fight. She was, um, it was just shitty. The whole thing was sh- just shitty. That's just not. But it okay? wasn't shitty on my part, okay? Because I'm skinny, okay? And that was a fat person. Yeah, but at first I was like, okay, I guess they're just hugging. And he's like, oh, yeah? Well, I think you could tell I had no idea this human being was because I had a look of scaredness on my face. <laughs> huh? I saw the state puff marshmallow man coming at me. It's frightening. So then... Uh, Ariana tells us this story. So we're on our way here, and like Brock's friends, who's clearly intoxicated, puts his arm around James, and he's like, "Hey, buddy, I know like, you." Like, like this, like this, because you know that's how Brock's friends are. They're always like, hey! 
I love those Australian lugs. So uh, hot, right? They're so hot. So, so anyway, James was like, gay, you know, or whatever. <laughs> so he's like, I've never seen this guy in my life. And by the way, his eyes are rolling back into the back of his head, like drool slopping. What the fuck are you judging for? I know. You were just spinning plates and drooling <laughs> at Banner Pump's house five minutes ago. I know. No one is more judgmental than a sober drunk person. Lala's like... Trust me. What do you think my problem is today? Drinking all this fucking water. I'm like, fuck all these people. Lala's like, it was an annoying drunk's hugs. And, but like James like body checks him hard. And then James just bounced right off his pecs and flew right into the door. Yeah, like he stumbled back like three paces. And Ariana's like, oh, James, I wish one of you had seen his wedding guests. <laughs> Boom. I should have Will Smith backhanded his bitch ass. All right. So, Ari- like so for some James- guy saying hi to him. Yeah, James. it's crazy. So they're, they're sitting at the table. James is going on and on about this, about someone who dared to touch him. And Ariana's sitting two seats away. And she's like, she's sort of telling Tom, like, wow, like two seconds after I sit down, I'm being berated by this one about a situation because I don't want to fight. Like, so wrong. I don't want to fight, you know? So then James is like, oh, hi, Tom, Ariana, I really think it's no big deal that I almost got killed, killed by a big person. And Ariana's like, watch your tone when you speak to me, because you've been really rude to me. You shoved a guy to the ground, and then you go, I didn't shove a guy to the ground. I didn't shove a guy to the ground. A fat person fell. <laughs> or is it my fault? Is it my fault? <laughs> Lala's like, you almost did. Okay, you almost did. Like me, almost being a famous actress. You almost did. And then, so he's like, oh, really, Lala? We'll pick your words very carefully right now, all right? And Raquel's like, watching Allie cringe with embarrassment makes me so happy that's not me anymore. (laughs) Thankfully, no one is going to cringe when they see my face ever again. (laughs) Cut to current paparazzi pictures of Raquel in the street. Raquel, Raquel is looking like a cat that got squirted with a water gun on her face. <laughs> they're getting every single shot of her. And Lala, who hates all this violence that they're talking about right now, goes, Don't you fucking talk to me like that. I'll come across the table and shove your ass to the ground, you fat little bitch. Oh, oh, really? Is that where your head's at? Okay, Ariana, I'm sorry. I wish you were more on my side right now. Disengage. 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 So Ariana's like, uh, what? The side of not wanting there to be a fight is the only side to be on. Hit me first! Hit me first! Hit me first! I'm on the first. side of not wanting there to be a fight. Hit me period. First. He, he period. Was back I was, or I'm not. I don't like him doing it. I don't want you to do it either. <laughs> Love Ariana. <sighs> Thank God. And so then Allie's like, um, I cannot sit here and watch James act like this. It makes me question everything. This makes you question everything? Where the fuck have you been? Wait till she finds out about Google. God. And so she storms out. Well, she storms out, like, beautifully. She just slowly walks out. Yeah. And then uh, James is like, and now my girlfriend's leaving. Fuck it. Get up off your fat (laughs) ass and go chase her out, James. Man, this show is infuriating, and God damn it, I love it. That brings us to the end of Vanderpump Rules. Thank you, San Francisco, for coming out tonight. Watch What Crappens would like to thank its premium sponsors. Ain't no thing like Allison King. Ashley Savoni, she don't take no baloney. Christy Wowardy Dowardy. Dana C. Dana Do. She's not just a Sheila, she's a Daniela. Itchels. Aaron McNicholas, she don't miss no trickleus. Hava Nagila Weber. Jamie, she has no less namey. Sip some scotch with Jessica Trotch. She's always supplying, it's Kelly Ryan. Kristen the Piston Anderson. You're never alone with Lacey Monteleon. Let's give a kisserino to Lisa Lino. Megan Berg, you can't have a burger without the Berg. Sarah Greenwood, she only uses her power for good. Can't stop fanning over Tina Manning. The Bay Area Betches, 
Betches. And our super premium sponsors. Somebody get us 10 cc's of Betsy MD. We're taking the gold with Brenda Silva. Let's get real with Caitlin O'Neill. Don't get salty with Christine Pepper. Better do what she says. It's Elva Enriquez. Can't have a meal without the Emily sides. Undo your fasteners. It's Aaron Kastner. Nobody holds a candle to Jamie Kendall. She's not harsh. She's Jill Hirsch. We will, we will. Joanna Rockland, you. My favorite Murdo, Karen McMurdo. We love him madly. It's Kyle Pod Shadley. Let's go on a bender with Lauren Fender. She's a good hobby. It's Lauren Hobgood. We want to hang with Liz Lang. The incredible edible Matthew sisters. Nancy Cease and DeSisto. Give him hell, Miss Noel. She's the queen bee. It's Sarah Lemke. Shannon out of a cannon, Anthony. Let's take off with Tamla Plain. She ain't no shrinking Violet Kuchar. Hey, Prime members, you can listen to Watch Your Crappens ad-free on Amazon Music. Download the Amazon Music app today. Or you can listen ad-free with Wondery Plus in Apple Podcasts. Before you go, tell us about yourself by completing a short survey at wondery.com survey.